Hello, I wish you great delight, great joy, wherever you are on our loving planet Earth. I wish you well and peace. I just now finished watching uh, or seeing, I believe, I don't know, at least as far as Fox is concerned, or whatever company owned them, whatever company owned them, I, I guess this may be the last incarnation of the X-Men movie. This movie was called, as you all probably aware, X-Men, Dark Phoenix. Now, the first thing that get me in the movie, just like with the first one, why in the world are you going to call it Dark Phoenix? But the person is never referred to as Phoenix or Dark Phoenix throughout the whole movie. No one ever called her Phoenix. No one ever called her Dark Phoenix. I guess a, I guess a better power, I guess a better name would be X-Men Jean Grey Rebirth. Jean Grey Reborn. People know what that means. She got that power. She got the ultimate power level like in the comic books. But nowhere in a movie does anyone ever call her Dark Phoenix or Phoenix. So it don't make no sense. None. At least if we look at most movies like Mission Impossible, James Bond, etc. They may use the title of the movie in the movie at least one time. They didn't use that word Dark Phoenix not once. So, hey, it don't make no sense. But other than that, <clears throat> I did like the second incarnation of the Jean Grey power boost a lot better than the first one. The first one that was released in what, 2000, early 2000, whatever, it was weak and flimsy. It was weak and flimsy, and it was an anticlimactic ending. She had to die. She died from a, a simple stab wound. That don't make no sense. She had all that power, but she was still a simple mortal. All that cosmic level power that that first Jean Grey had, and all he had to do was stab her through the heart and kill her. I think it was that same dumb way in the comic books, too. No, no, in the comic books, a lot different. I think she got disintegrated in the comic books. So at least that's a little bit more believable. Believable. But in that first, mo first Fox movie, she got stabbed through the heart or wherever. And that was that. Ultimate power. When you have ultimate power like that, it's hard to kill you. And at least if you're seeing the second incarnation, it was not easy easy to kill her it wasn't she had massive power level so hey you better have another massive power level to uh eliminate her you better be able to disintegrate her or scatter her atoms all over the planet so she cannot reintegrate her atoms so in the second one if you go see it yes she was stabbed it seemed like she was gonna die but then she better say wait a minute I got vast power level. I'm a cosmic level entity. So you cannot kill me by stabbing me through the chest. Stabbing me through the heart. So I will give it up to the second incarnation of that particular movie title. It was not easy to kill her. I doubt if she could be killed at all. So she was... A cosmic level entity and this movie. Just like if you saw the first one, Professor Xavier was the antagonist in the first, and he was the antagonist in the second. Both of them put mental blocks on her to quote, try to help her, to quote, try to ease the strain of her having such vast powers. So even before she got hit 
by that radiation burst in space. And I'm not giving no spoilers because you saw it on TV how she got hit by that radiation blast or whatever it was. And it so-called increased her power. But if you all saw X-Men Apocalypse, she already had vast power. She already had the vast power then. And that's why the professor put that mental block on her. He knew that she was, in comic book terminology, an Omega level class mutant. She had vast power. The Omega level mutants, they have such vast power that they can affect a city, a state, or even a planet for some of them. She was that level before she got zapped by the alien. She was that level. So I don't know what the alien really did to her. It doesn't seem like the alien was a parasite in the movie. Because like I said, if you saw X-Men Apocalypse, she was so powerful that she can take down Apocalypse, who was able to like easily dispatch the whole team. She had the Phoenix level power before that thing hit her. And that's why the professor with Charles Xavier, y'all, in both movies, put those blocks in her mind because they knew she had tremendous power, but they was doubting arrogant men that they were. They doubted she had the ability to control her ultimate power. As I stated, I don't know what the force did to her it did not seem to increase her power level. All that, all that phoenix, all that energy blast did was her to her was to release the mental blocks that the professor or her, because she could have been blocking her own self also. She could have been putting mental blocks on herself because she was that, she had that level of power. She could have instinctively upheld the professor's mental blocks. But anyway, the, um, like in the second one and in the first one, the first one was sort of tacky. It was tacky. In the first movie, she released that mental block after she saved the X-Men from getting pulverized by some water. Great. How, she, how that mental block don't get uh, released or breaking down after she saved the people who she loved? At least in the second incarnation, it made sense. The alien entity, which it was, the alien entity, because it did not originate on Earth, the alien enti entity helped to free her mind. By helping to free her mind, it was able to hinder or slowly break down the barriers placed in her mind. And the barriers were not just power level, the birds of placing her mind made her forget her past too. I'm not going to tell you how it made her forget her past or what, why she forgot her past. You have to see the movie to see that. But anyway, the mental blocks that Professor had in this second incarnation of the movie limited her powers and it distorted her perception of her family. Check out the movie and you will see with the distortion of her family involved. So, like I said, the second one is a lot better. It did have its weak points. Like I said to me, in a video I posted earlier, Raven and Beast said they was proud to be mutants. But all throughout the movie, they kept hiding their true self. <clears throat> and it seemed like in this movie, Beast had the ability to switch between human forms. I thought in those other movies, he had a hologram to hide his appearance. Now it seemed like mentally, he can switch between a human and beast. Like Raven, with her shapeless and powers, could switch between a human and her normal mutant form. But regardless, it seemed like both of them was ashamed to be mutants. They only showed their true self when they was using their powers out in public. Behind closed doors. Talking to other mutants. At the professor's school. Of gifted youngsters. Or talking to Magneto. 
they quickly switch to their human form. They should, that's the time to be showing a mutant. If I'm talking to a mutant, I want to look like a mutant. If I'm talking to a human, hey, I'm going to disguise my appearance to make them feel at ease. No, they was hiding themselves from other mutants. I didn't like that. That was a weak point. But other than that, I richly enjoyed the movie because I stated in my first review that X-Men in this movie, they was working as a true team. In the first movie in the early 2000s, it's like everybody, it was disjointed. Everyone was just using their power here, power there, power everywhere. No. In the second one, as you will see, it seemed like they functioned as a well oiled machine. They're not using their powers haphazardly. They picking and choose how who who they want to fight and why they want to fight that person. Also, I was displeased with the ending. I was like in the other one, she died. Technically, in this one, she died. Even though she made a little speech that she became something so so and so still. Neither one of them was walking around on the planet Earth anymore. They bo- Technically, you can say they both died. I didn't like that. Why couldn't she still li- be alive handing her powers? But I guess they don't want to have a person of ultimate power walking around with the other X-Men because then there would be no need for the other X-Men on the missions because she can go by herself and handle any mission. So that's why they like to kill her off. She was so powerful. They said, damn, we got to get rid of her because we can't use her in the next movie because she got all this power. She make the other X-Men seem redundant. Yes, they seem redundant. And another thing I didn't like about was Beast. It seemed like he was a a clown in the movie to me. He wasn't telling no jokes. But you know, like when he was hopping around, jumping around, it isn't like he can jump far. Like when you see Spider-Man hop and jump, hey, that guy be jumping far. Beast is supposed to be able to jump and hop on the level of Spider-Man. His agility didn't seem all that. It didn't seem like a normal, regular guy running around on four legs. When I saw him hopping over them cars, I said, man, that looks so phony. He did not look impressive at all jumping from car to car. It's like a regular man running around. With blue fur on. He did He did have a level of strength in the movie. I give him that. Later on. Like in certain scenes. They did show his agility. But I'm just saying for the most part. He didn't, have him, he didn't seem very agile. And in the comic books. He's extremely agile. Because I know. Because I've been reading comic books for about two decades. I mean three. Well three decades. So I know what he could do. He still seems smart and intelligent. He still sounds like a genius level intellect in a movie. Just like he's in a comic book. Genius level intellect. Now I guess you all know who died. You all know who died. Now if Jean have all that power. When she can reduce a bottom. When she can reduce people to atoms. Yes. Just like in that first one. She can reduce you to atoms, to dust. She can change. Uh, she's powerful enough to negate Magneto's power. She can transmute matter. So why couldn't she save Raven? Why couldn't she? When Raven got injured, she left her right there to die. She could have pulled her off and put her in a status bill or something. And take it to, take it to, let her get medical help. She just stood right there. That a person who she know for many years just died. That don't make no sense to me. You got ultimate power. But you're going to stand there looking stupid. That a person who you know for at least 10 years slowly pass away into the next life. So those are some of my likes and dislikes about the recent X-Men, Dark Phoenix, Phoenix movie. Overall, if I had to give it a grade, I would give it, I guess I would give it a C plus. Not a B, a C plus 
Because it did have its weaknesses and flaws in there. But it was not terrible. So C+. If you like my little synopsis or review of the movie. My discussion. Because I didn't give no spoilers. I just said what I like about the movie. Most YouTube channels. When they talk about the movie. They tell you what happened in the movie. They can't talk like the way I'm talking. That's giving a reflection of what they think. They tell you every last thing. Every last. So they not. I'm an educator. I'm an educator and professor, so I know how to talk somewhat. But you know what I'm talking about. All the other YouTube channels, they only talk five minutes, three minutes about a movie that lasts two hours. I said, hmm, they really can talk, can they? But anyway, I said to give it a C plus. If you like what I discussed. Please give me a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel. Because it's a brand new channel. It's only one year old. So please subscribe. If you are already a subscriber. And would like to be notified immediately. When I review a movie that I like and enjoy. Please click the bell button. If you find my discussion entertaining. And life and engaging. Please share this on one of the social media platforms. That's scattered all over the internet. Such as, number one, Facebook, number two, Twitter, number three, Vimo, number four, G+, and number five, Instagram. Share it to whoever you like. Have a good, good day. Thank you for dropping by, and until the next time.